States. Robert Gates served as Secretary of Defense under Presidents Obama and George W. Bush and was the CIA's director under President George H.W. Bush. He's also the author of the book, A Passion for Leadership. Secretary Gates, good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Rex Tillerson was approved by the Senate Foreign Relations Committee last night. The vote was 11 to 10, despite some senators' serious concerns about his ties to Russia. This is the guy you suggested to then president-elect Donald Trump. Are you worried that as he gets confirmed and moves forward in his job, there will always be lingering doubts about him any time he deals with Russia or Putin? I don't think so. I think that once, uh, once Rex is confirmed and in office, uh, that his actions uh, will prove that he's basically totally focused on looking out for the best interests of the United States. I'm, frankly, I was disappointed that it was a party line vote. I, would, I had hoped that a few Democrats would support Rex. Let's, let's stay on Russia for a second. You're very aware of the things Donald Trump has tweeted and said about Russia and Vladimir Putin, calling him a great leader, calling him an asset, saying he wants a closer relationship with him. You, four months ago, said Trump's expressions of admiration for Putin and his authoritarian regime are naive and irresponsible. And you're also the guy who famously once said, I looked in Vladimir Putin's eyes and I saw the eyes of a stone cold killer. When you met with then-president-elect Trump a couple of months ago, did you personally say those things to him? Did you warn him about Putin? I, I did. I, I, used, I told him about that story, about looking into Putin's eyes. But I also told him that I thought that the challenge for his administration was going to be to thread the needle between figuring out how to push back against Putin's aggressions and uh, meddling and intervention and thuggery and at the same time figure out a way to stop what I regard as a dangerous downward spiral in the relationship. But you got to do both things. You know the FBI and the CIA and some other intelligence agencies are investigating possible improper contact between three of Mr. Trump's former campaign associates. The New York Times goes as far as saying they're looking at intercepted communications and financial data. You've got an experienced gut. You, you were this nation's top spy. Does this make you queasy? Well, I don't know anything about the investigation. What I, what I have some confidence in based on experience is I have no doubt that the Russians tried to intervene in our election, that they tried to discredit and delegitimize the election. They're trying to do that in Europe right now uh, in elections there. So this is, a, this is a part of the way the Russians do business. Let me move on to the CIA. When, when President Trump went to the CIA a couple of days ago and stood in front of that wall of stars, which represent the people who gave their lives for this country and the intelligence community. And, and he chose the opportunity to pick a fight with the media and did some self-promoting. Did you feel he was disrespectful to the agency and, and those people who gave their lives? Well, I think there was sort of, a, there sort, seems to be sort of a stream of consciousness that goes on. Uh, first of all, I thought it was an important gesture of respect to go out there in the first place, uh, even before my, Mike Pompeo was confirmed and basically say to the people at the agency that he respected them and wanted to work with them. So I think that was important. Is there still a rift? Well, I think that to the degree there is, and you know, there's always but tension. But you're in contact with some no, of your own there's associates. Always, first of all, there's always tension between CIA, CIA and presidents because CIA says things presidents don't like. And, and so I, you know, I think Mom, Mike Pompeo, I've talked to him several times, and I think he will be successful in sort of mending this, but more importantly, figuring out how to make CIA a useful asset for the president. When President Trump went to Langley over the weekend, he made a comment. He said, we might get another chance to steal Iraq's oil. He said this, quote, if we kept the oil, we wouldn't have had ISIS in the first place. The old expression to the victor belong the spoils. We should have kept the oil, but OK, maybe we'll have another chance. As the former head of the Defense Department, I want your reaction to that. I have no clue what he's talking about. If, if the U.S. military were to go in now and try to steal the rock soil, wouldn't that be I, an international crime? I think that's not going to happen. Let me ask you about another comment he made. During his inaugural address, he said, quote, a new vision will govern our land from this day forward. It's going to be only America first. Historic, and you're a student of history. Historically speaking, how do you think that sounds to our allies? I think it reinforces their impression already that the United States is pulling back from engagement around the world. 
And I think it's leading a lot of this started before the election under the Obama administration. And I think it just reinforces uh, their view that they maybe need to recalibrate their relationships with other countries, including Russia and, and China. If they think the United States is, is basically pulling back uh, from the leadership role we've had for the last seven decades, other countries are going to fill that they vacuum. They like a vacuum. In your book, you write this about important qualities for a leader. You say they have to have the right temperament, they have to keep their ego in check, and they have to treat people with dignity and respect. Having, having written that, are you confident that Donald Trump will be an effective leader? I think that you have <clears throat> sort of two parallel universes, if you will. You've got the public commentary, tweeting, and so on and so forth that's a little mind-boggling sometimes. But then many people talk about meeting with uh, the president in private and having very serious, very thoughtful uh, conversations. That was the case when I met with him in December. So I think when I look at the team that he's putting around him in national security, Tillerson and Mattis and Kelly and so on, and, and I hear about the meetings in private, I think he can exercise very sound leadership and make good decisions about how you change. Would you like to see him bring change. those two sides of his personality well, together? the problem is that the first impacts the second in terms of perceptions around the world. So, Former Defense Secretary Robert Gates and CIA Director, it's great to have you here. Thanks very much, Really man. Appreciate, appreciate it. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.